Welcome back to Shoe Lights, folks. This is a tough time of year for me, uh, so I'm gonna just do this video in one take without any editing, just to get some content out to you. So forgive the fact that there's no editing. But this Synergy 2 here, this uh, Freelux Synergy 2, has the standard LH351D Samsung emitter in it. It's a 5000K. Sometimes we call it dog farts, because it's funny to say. And the one on the right here is also Synergy 2. But this one, I just recently pulled the emitter out and put a Nietzsche 519A SM453 in it. So that's a 4500K emitter. But I left the dome intact. And you can see, hopefully, that both of these have their domes intact. Now, uh, well, this one's unmodified. So, of course, it has the dome intact. Now, the purpose of this video is talk about what... Nietzsche 509A does right. Uh, it's, it's the new hotness, right? Everybody loves this emitter, but let's talk about its limitations. Uh, there's not many limitations, to be honest, but let's talk about it. So if you look at what Freelix has here with their Samsung emitter, it is really bright and it's really high CRI, okay? Now I've got my video, but the video recorder here, I got it locked at daylight temperature. So when you look at this, this should look very white and very even. Now, the one thing that is bad about the Samsung emitters is they tend to run a little green, a little above BBL. Now, the Nietzsche 519A runs neutral to rosy uh, with its dome intact. Now, if you remove the dome, it gets super rosy. So let's take a look at the tint of these versus each other. Now, this one is 5,000 and this one's 4,500, so it's gonna be a little warmer. But uh, let's take a look at them next to each other. And you can see that warmth difference, but also I really think this one on the right looks considerably rosier. So that's you know compounded by the fact that this one tends to be on the green side. So already you can see why people love this emitter. It's just so warm and inviting. And remember, these are only 500K apart. So, well, 500K as far as how that they are binned. Um, I did measure them on my Siconic, and I found that this one was right at 5,000, like Samsung quotes. And this one was actually about 4,200 even though they say it's a 4,500 bin. So it's more like 800K difference when you measure the two. Now, let's talk about CRI. Okay, they're both CRI, sorry, they're both high CRI emitters, but this one is called 9050, R9050, which means it's guaranteed to be a CRI of 90 and an R9, so that's just the red value of at least 50. And when I measured it, and I'm looking over my Siconic on my left here, um, and let me just hold it up for you. So when I measure it, uh, this is the Samsung now. Sorry, I, I guess I got confused. But on the Samsung, I got it right at 5,000, like you see, 49 and plus change. And, and by the way, I'm mid-ramp, so when you hit turbo, it's definitely 5,000. Notice that the Delta UV is, is above BBL, so it's in the green there. You can see right here it says uh, 44 above. But the R9 is 92, I'm sorry, the RA, which is the CRI, is 92, and the R9 is about 55. Now, that value varies depending on whether you're low ramp, mid ramp, turbo, right? Now, the Nietzsche here, the 509A, is like almost 98 CRI. Now, I don't think between 95 and 98, you're gonna notice a difference. I, I really wanna go out and tell you, I just wanna be very careful to explain that I think people make a big deal about CRI and it's not that big of a deal. Now, the R9 value on this is also 95. So it does destroy the Samsung on the R9 value. However, again, I don't think you should put too much stock into R9. What really makes this one look great versus this one is the tint, the lack of green. So, you know, just flesh tones, that's what, I mean, honestly, we're humans. We like looking at other humans. And people look better under this light than in this light. And if you think that CRI really, really matters, um, I disagree. And I will tell you because I have some XBL highs that are 70 CRI with low R9 values. 
but they're very under BBL. And when I look at even just objects, like, you know, you know, boxes and objects around my room, I notice that well-tinted emitters, you know, meaning ones that are a BB, under BBL that are rosy, just look way nicer than even high CRI Samsungs, which are above BBL. Now, the final part of the video that I wanted to make, here we go. If you are saying at this point, okay, Samsung is dead. We're not going to use LH351D anymore. Um, I mean, I, I, I kind of get that because I love tint and I think tint is the most important thing. But let me show you output, okay? Let me show you two things that I noticed when I modded my synergies here. So let me go ahead and put this on turbo and then adjust the exposure, which has been locked this whole time, and I'll lock it like this. Okay, now the first thing I wanna show you, because now I've locked the exposure, is that when you put the Nietzsche on turbo and the Samsung next to it on turbo, the Samsung right here is definitely brighter. I don't know how well that's coming across on camera to my eyes, it's pretty noticeable. I'm trying to show you on camera, I think it is translating a little bit. But this one, I measured on my lumen tube at 830 lumens for the single emitter in this host. And this one was 650, uh, 640 actually. So um, there's a difference of a couple hundred lumens there. Now the other thing I wanted to point out, and let's see if we can show it, is if you look at the beam on this one, and this is a difference on the dome now, because the dome is much bigger on the uh, Samsung. See how even and just flat across this hot spot is? Now let's see if we can show on here. Can you see how on this one, there's kind of like a hard center and then there's kind of like a ring here that steps down and then there's some artifacts around this corona here. You see as I rotate it? So I just wanna point out that, you know, arguably the beam looks nicer on the original Samsung in this host, okay? So again, um, I, I'm not saying that I like Samsung better or anything. That's not my point. I'm just trying to explain that I don't think the um, Samsung emitter is going to be never used again. I think that there's times that, you know, it's appropriate. Um, now, with that said, I do think... Here, let's ramp these down. Uh, I do think that this one is the one that I like better in this case, even with the little artifacts you can see on camera now. So for all of you that are jumping on the Nietzsche 519A bandwagon, it's an amazing emitter and I love it, but I just kind of wanted to make this video to point out that emitters like the Samsung, emitters like the 219B, which is just still a king of tint. It's just so gorgeous. Yes, its output is lower, but that then the 519A, but it has a place, right? When you, you know, if I'm doing a quad, if I'm doing like, you know, a Hank light, like a KR4 or something, I'll probably still opt for the 219B over the 519A because the tint is just so gorgeous. And if I'm doing a single emitter, I can, and especially if I'm, you know, we're using it at work during daytime, you just don't notice the green during the day. Uh, at night, and that's why I'm inside right now is to, you know, basically block out the sun, you do notice it a little bit. All right, guys, hope you find that interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.